This is Alex Stig, Regional Extension Agent and Coordinator of the Alabama Pasture Rail Program. In this video, you will see updates on each of the nine loads of cattle we shipped from June through December 2019 to High Plains Feed Yard in Montezuma, Kansas. As you'll see in the videos, the pins are rather muddy due to about a half inch of ice that was received at the feed yard just days before we arrived on January the 20th of, of 2020. And since then, they've received about another eight inches of snow. Outside of those events, though, Weather conditions have been good, and health's been pretty fantastic for the cattle throughout the program. This is the second half of lot 1403. Um, we shipped these calves out here in June. It was 78 head from Vista Farms over in Fayette County, registered Angus outfit over there that uh, got a, the cattle got a lot of performance. The first half of those calves we harvested back in um, December. They ran 100% choice, almost 60% certified Angus beef. Six seven percent primes, uh, less than twenty percent yield grade fours and fives. So that, and, and on top of that, gained over four pounds a day uh, while they were here. And I expect this younger set has, is going to do. This is kind of the, the younger, smaller end of that set uh, is going to do very similar. These calves are uh, going to go on the show list today, and will be harvested uh, sometime next week. So um, these calves always do good. Vistas put cattle in the program for the last. Uh, four years and, and every time their cattle grade, yield, grow, and, and do pretty fantastic. And I don't expect these calves to be any different. Unfortunately, uh, we did have a little bit of a health hiccup with these cattle, about 55 or 60 days on feed. Uh, ran into a little issue there, had, a, had some problems, but they're over that and doing well now. And then the other unfortunate side effect is these cattle shipped out here just before the Tyson plant burnt in Holcomb, Kansas. Um, so from a contracting perspective, the, the market went wild. Any of you guys that were paying attention to the market at the time, the market went pretty crazy then. And so uh, and we're gonna be real close after we contracted the cattle after the fire. We're gonna have a just right out of break even on these cattle, unfortunately. But because of the way those cattle are gonna hang on the rail, they're gonna hit all their grid premiums, you know, hit the CAB premiums, the, the prime premiums. Uh, they'll end up still doing really well and actually beating, uh, beating plant averages for, for price that day. So, so this is lot 1603. These would be a group of 60 head of cattle that we shipped out here in early September last year. Uh, the bigger end of the cattle, the ones that you see with the red ear tags in their uh, their left ears, like the couple right here in front of us, those calves averaged 879 coming in. We had them at a break even of about a dollar six, and we contracted those calves back in the fall at 115.55. The lighter end, the cattle that don't have those bright red ear tags, those calves averaged 688. So we had a lot of variation in this pen from size on the front end, but 688. We figured them in there at a, a break even of, of probably about 109 to 110. Uh, and so we had those cattle contracted for a late March, early April kill with National at 118. 118 and some, some change. This is one of our early groups from October. Lot 1699 is a set of mostly heifers um, from producers in Northeast Alabama and Central Alabama. Uh, this, there were two pins of this group. This is the heavier end, roughly 60 head or so of these calves. When they came in back October the 18th, uh, averaged 817 pounds. Uh, our calculated break even on these calves, they're gonna kill mid-March to early April. Um, the calculated break even on them of, of about 97 cents a hundred weight. Uh, and we were able to get them contracted with national beef at 122 and some change. So uh, we're gonna be able to do pretty well on these calves. Haven't had really any real health issues in this set. Uh, pretty, pretty nice set of calves all the way around. This is lot 1700, 67 head, mostly the lighter end of our early October shipment from uh, one half came from several producers in central Alabama and then the other half from a bunch of producers up in Northeast uh, Alabama. Um, these calves showed up out here in early October. This group weighed 669 on average. Um, they had a calculated break even at about a dollar five fifty, and we got these calves contracted at 122.51 with National Beef for a mid-April harvest. Uh, so again, being mostly heifers, heifers got really really cheap this past fall in Alabama, so they didn't have a ton of value when they got shipped out here, and, and we're going to wind up doing well. No health issues at this time. 67 head, all 67 head are alive and kicking, doing well. Um, you can hear a little bit of coughing there in the background, but but nothing major. 
All right, so this is lot 1723, a group of 62 mixed uh, steers and heifers that we shipped back in late October from uh, Somerville, Alabama. These would be Mr. Doug and Rance Wigginton's cattle. Um, we had these at a break even when they came in at about 123 for an April, late March, April kill. These calves weighed 851 uh, when they showed up out here in High Plains. Um, and we were able to get them contracted with National Beef at, at 124, uh, 575. So uh, usually these calves grade pretty well, do a pretty good job on yield and, and quality grade. So when they get on the grid, they should do really, really well. This is uh, our late load, late October load of Alabama pasture to rail calves, a mixed load. Total of 94 calves in this group from producers from Jackson County, Coleman County, St. Clair County, uh, down to around Prattville area, Montgomery area, kind of all over the state. Um, you can see green tags on there would be our, our heavy end. Those cattle are gonna sell in late March. The, the big end of the cattle, or the smaller end of the cattle, excuse me, be late April. Unfortunately, in this group, you can see there's lots of variation. I mean, anything from these right here that have kind of got a Holstein look to them, but are, but are pretty Brangusy type cattle, to we've got purebred Herefords in the group, um, some some purebred Shorthorn, uh, some good black cattle, some some uh, Charlay types that when the, the Packers came to look at them and wanted to give us some contracts, uh, they were not interested in contracting these cattle at the time. They look a lot better than they did back then. Uh, but because of that, we went ahead and hedged these cattle so the bigger end of the calves would have had a, about a break even of around a dollar um, eleven, and we've got all of the cattle hedged in there at one twenty-seven, around the one twenty-seven mark. Um, the, the lighter end of the cattle had a little higher break even. I think they were one fifteen, and we still were able to get them all hedged in there again at that one twenty-seven ballpark. So really, no health issues. Again, knock on wood, hadn't lost any cattle out of this group. Uh, nothing real major. So you know, hopefully they'll do really well. What'll end up happening on that hedge? The cattle will get sold. Uh, to one of the two major packers in Dodge City more than likely uh, when it comes time for them to kill. And then, you know, we'll take the proceeds from the hedge to add to that. But uh, overall, pretty nice. Pretty nice looking set of cattle, even though they got a lot of color and variation in them. This is lot 1797. It's a group of 62 head of mixed steers and heifers that were sent out here in early December, December 11th or so. Um, these include uh, 26 head from our Alabama Junior Pasture to Rail program. So we got not 26, but 29 head of, of calves from six juniors across the state of Alabama. And then the balance of the load was made up by cattle from, from Mr. Doug and Rance Wigginton and uh, Lake Majestic Farms, Nick Cornelius up in, in Northeast Alabama. They, they helped us fill the load out to make sure our junior kids could get their calves out here. So the bigger end of the cattle, the ones you see with the bright green tags like this uh, 9067 calf right here in front of us now, uh, those are our heavy end of the group. They were averaging up above 800 pounds when they got here back in December. Those will go on a uh, an April kill. Unfortunately, there were only 28 calves in that group, so it's not quite enough for us to get a forward contract with Cargill or National Beef. So instead, those cattle have been hedged. We hedged them at uh, at about 127 um, and a, with a break even at, at about 105. So. You know we've got a, a good bit of margin built into those already the lighter end uh were more around around the 680 range when they came in 680 to 700 uh, those calves are a may a late may harvest we did get contracts written on those with a, a plus one basis so whatever the uh the june board is when we get the price set we'll get a dollar above that uh, we're working on getting those contracted actually tomorrow on tuesday um, break even on the lighter end was at about a dollar eleven, uh, and we're trying to get them contracted at one nineteen fifty, which would put us at a net contract price of one twenty fifty. Um, so we'd be somewhere in the the eight nine dollars a hundred weight uh, profit on those calves. So very very little health issues in this group so far. We haven't lost any of them. Uh, I don't see any snotty noses. Nobody's in the hospital today. Uh, so calves calves look really really good. This is lot eighteen nineteen. This is a group of calves uh, from three producers in uh, Cherokee County, Northeast Alabama. Um, you can see on some of the calves in the group, these bright green ear tags. There are 78 head in this, this pen. So the, the green ear tag cattle that have got the big bright green ear tags, those are gonna be the heavier end. Those cattle will be sorted off and sold uh, on a June contract. And the balance, the smaller end of the cattle, will go on a July contract. Um, 
so these calves were a little on the smaller side uh the the heavier end is going to average about six and a quarter uh where the lighter end was was about 540. Um, so we've got contracts written on these with national beef uh, but have not priced them yet uh, the, the smaller the bigger end had a break even of about a dollar 18 a pound and the lighter end we have calculated at a break even of about a dollar 15 a pound which is almost exactly where the boards are running right now for for those contract months so we're uh, kind of looking for a place to price these calves currently at a profit this is a set of calves from the E.V. Smith Research Station in Shorter, Alabama uh, that we are working on a research project with. We were evaluating, second year we've been evaluating a couple of different backgrounding rations, looking at how those background rations affect transportation stress to the feed yard and then the resulting feed yard um, performance and carcass performance of those calves. So these calves were shipped out here in late September and we'll go to harvest in uh, the last couple of weeks of March or first week of April or so. Mostly about half Hereford sired calves and half Angus sired calves, uh, about 75% steers in this set.